so this is a video in which I'm going to make a, a solid oak bench. Uh, here in my container I keep all my hardwoods. You can see my hardwood library that uh, we have here. And uh, this chunk of wood I got from a sawmill down the road from my house in upstate New York. It's 9 feet long, 16 inches wide, and about 2 and a half inches thick. It weighs, I don't know, 200 pounds when I first got it about three years ago. I saw it at the bottom of a stack and I asked them to pull it out for me. It was 50 bucks. And uh, we bring it over to the, the garage I have in my upstate place. It's not much of a shop, but I, I'm able to do some things there. So I'm just cutting this to size. And then this is going to get thrown in my pickup truck. And then we're going to pick it up back in my New York City shop. This was the end of the day. Willie and I, Willie's my, my assistant in this video. We were getting ready to leave upstate. And I knew that I needed to bring this to the city. So to get it in the truck, I cut off uh, two legs at 18 inches. I basically use almost the entire piece of wood except for those sort of split ends with the S hooks in them. Those S hooks are to keep the wood from checking or drying and cracking. Uh, I decided I did not want to plane the cup out of this piece of wood. You can see it's cup, so now it's a cup facing a cup. There you can see how bad it is. Um, to plane it, the wood would have ended up becoming much thinner. Plus, I like the saw marks. And uh, knowing I wanted to do dovetails, I did six degree dovetails here. I knew that I wanted to have the dovetails, but I wanted them to be accurate in space. So that's why I, I use the table as a reference for 90 degrees. And then the actual hand cut there is 90 degrees to the bottom. So that works. I always mark what I want to remove because I get confused when I do these type of things. I'm just using a regular uh, rip saw, hand saw. Um, I have a couple of other saws, but this is the one that seemed to give me the best results, the fastest. This took quite some time. Dovetails isn't something I do often, but uh, in this case, I was. Uh, it's the vision I had for this piece of wood from the minute I saw it in the uh, at the sawmill. No pun intended. Um, this is probably going to ruffle a few feathers. This is uh, the way I'm cutting out my my waste wood. I'm using this, uh, this happens to be a Dremel tool, but there's several versions of this tool that um, is designed to just plunge right into wood. They work pretty good, but you got to really know how to use them. You got to be gentle. You got to allow the material to cut and allow the debris to exit. So I go in at it really gently. And uh, I'm using that chunk of steel there as my, as my 90 degree block. So once you get a good start, you can get a good straight cut. If you don't get off to a good start, your cut's just going to keep going crooked. So I checked this actually. Uh, I checked a few of these cuts with the uh, T-square, and they were really close. Uh, you'll see me clean them up a little bit with the uh, with the chisel. Now, since my uh, my board is so cupped, I couldn't really rely on math to uh, trans transport those marks. So I had to literally just uh, do a rubbing. And now you can see where the uh, those uh, the negative space does not touch the end of the wood because it's so cupped so by the time um, this uh, goes together there'll be literally a curve right at the apex where those two pieces of wood intersect um, to make a good accurate cut I clean up around the edge and I found because this wood was so hard if I wax the cut the wax basically becomes oil uh, and the blade moves through the wood much easier able to make cleaner cuts and here I'm just removing some debris and uh, getting ready to handsaw. By having those deep cut lines, it gives me a, a real accurate template to stay on. And here I am. I'm starting to cut. The uh, The wood is not kiln dried, but it's, it is it is air dried. It's certainly dry. There's no moisture inside of it, but it does tend to grab the saw blade. So I've been waxing the saw. You'll notice, uh, I think here, yeah, there it is. I've been using just min wax paste wax and I'm rubbing it on the blade that's where I also I also used it on the razor blade a few minutes ago and it just helps facilitate and uh, here I kind of jumped through time a little bit um, I uh, I did use the steel block to dig into that to get nice straight cuts oh here it is again I'm using the steel block and once I know that I'm kind of going in at a 90 degree I'll remove the steel block and uh, cutting into that and then I start to use the actual cut as my guide and here I am just cleaning up the cut with a with an old framing chisel that I had. Actually got that chisel at a garage sale for five bucks. 
and it's been one of my most useful tools. And here I am, the very first test fit. I haven't done dovetails in a hundred years. In fact, I think this is only like the third set of dovetails I've ever made. And uh, I did pretty good. And you can see how cupped it is here and how uneven it is. Uh, one side of the board is almost a quarter inch skinnier than the other. But again, I did not want to remove any of those circular saw marks. So I just worked with the shape that it was. And there's Spike. Spike isn't typically in the shop every day, but he was there on this particular day because my assistant David is making a sculpt of him. So we needed him around for reference. And so here we are cutting uh, some more spaces. And again, I'm just using the same method for the other side. In the distance, you can see the, the first set I did. And here again, cutting waxing my cuts to make sure that the blade passes through the wood. The deeper you get with a razor blade, the material actually begins to hug the blade. So by waxing it, it helps lubricate the blade. Whether you're using wood or leather, it, it always helps to lubricate it somehow with soap or wax. Just cutting some more. Again, this is the second side, so I kind of rush through it as far as the edit goes. I typically slow down my edit when there's some things that explicitly need to be explained, such as me putting the wax on, but I already talked about it. And this thing only cuts so deep, so I have to always get as deep as I can and then chunk out a big piece and then go all the way to the other end. There I am removing my template. Just a little palm sander I keep around. Cleaning up the dovetails. This side, for some reason, was a lot tighter than the other side. Uh, I couldn't find exactly the reason why it was tight but I figured as long as it goes together and doesn't crack which it didn't I just kept it tight and uh, I was off a little bit so you see how much deeper this side is than the other side so I cut those pins off and there's a sticking up a little bit there later on in the edit you'll see where I actually had to trim that side because now that side is longer to the ground that was about a quarter inch longer because the, the pins didn't go so deep and there I am, proud of my work. I was actually surprised I, I did as well as I did because I'm very rusty when it comes to doing this. And uh, now here I am, I'm just trying to get those overlapped joints to match the curve of each side. And uh, there again, I'm cutting off that piece. I, I opted to cut it off rather than to sand all that material away. Just sanding, sanding, sanding. When you have a, a piece of rough cut like this and you, you just kind of knock down the, the top surface a little bit, it gives a, a nice, sexy, old-fashioned, worn look. And now here I am, I'm jumping to metal. And uh, this is a four-inch chunk of steel stock that I had. And my band, so I actually cut it quite simply. I didn't expect it to go as smoothly as it did. And uh, the saw shuts off automatically once you pass through all the way. And there I am, surprised it didn't break the blade. And so I go and I cut the second one. The oil pump wasn't working for the first pass, so that's why you see me actually spraying oil on it. The second pass, I got the oil pump working again. Now this is going to be the truss rod. I'm just cutting off the piece that isn't needed. And uh, here you go, uh, cutting through those two discs so that I could then put them on the truss rod. That's my rigid milling machine, which I very rarely use, but it's good for slow drilling. And in this case, it worked good. I thought I was going to cut those on my South Bend lathe, but my machine chuck is not big enough to carry that 4-inch diameter. Now here I am drilling the holes, and you'll see me jump around. And I'm simply jumping around the holes and not drilling them all at the same time is because that piece of metal just got too hot to hold. So I was jumping around, and now here I'm just drilling the countersink. Drop the screw. And welding on those flanges. The welds are pretty ugly, but I knew that they would be buried inside of where they mount to the inside of the leg, so I wasn't so concerned. But they are good and strong, they're just not sexy looking. And you can see the light shining through, and then suddenly there's no light shining through that gap. It was a little open, it wasn't quite as the tight tolerance I would have got if I used the lathe. Now I'm removing the legs again for the, for the first time to pry them out and uh, I'm marking where the truss rod is going to penetrate through both sides and this wood drilled nice and easy 
and that's the other one. So I drilled both of them. On that first one, you could see that little ink line, and that's where I made up for the uh, the fact that that one leg was too long. Now here I'm trimming out the material that's going to basically be taken. Uh, the space will be taken by those ugly welds, and I'm just showing them off to the camera. But it's so out of focus that close, you can't really see what it is. And everything goes back together pretty easily. And uh, just smacking it all together. And uh, that one side was still pretty hard, so I had to use the clamps again. And now this is where I apply some glue. Not too much glue because uh, the, the, the joints are pretty good. So just to kind of drive them home, I use the pipe clamp just to squeeze them as tight as I possibly can. And there, it's looking pretty good. Getting ready to put my gold screws in. That's uh, brass screws. And you got to be real careful when you put brass screws in with a screw gun because they'll break right off. And there I am drilling the other side. I had to clamp it, but I edited it out. That's why you see that little jump there. I'm using 80 grit, I think, just to break down some of the, uh, the high things. There. And uh, here I'm using a, a, a die called W. Lockwood dye. It um, comes in a powder form and you dissolve it in hot water and it's super, super concentrated. And uh, I'm just making sure it soaks in really good. It's really the only way to get super, super black, black oak. Yeah. And uh, then I'm just rubbing some sawdust into the cracks just to sort of fill them in. And then there's a few gaps here and there. My, my dovetails aren't super super tight at the very edges and there again I'm just throwing some sawdust into the cracks just to fill them in they're strong but there's a couple of gaps here on there and I'm just letting that dye really soak in it's what's nice about it is it's not like paint per se where it's gonna actually fill in the grain so the grain stays open and it does raise the grain so uh, the next day which is now the next day I, I did give it a light sanding that's why you can see I burned through some of the edges there and here I'm using Presto Blackener. It's the gel on the steel. And then I jump to the Brie Wax. It's uh, the ebony colored Brie Wax. It's, I was looking for the name, ebony. Brie Wax is great in, uh, in colors. It actually stains the wood. So there you can see wherever I might have burned through with the sandpaper is now black again. And this just gives it a nice weathered look. It looks like it's naturally worn, like maybe it was a bench that's been sat on for many, many years. It gives it that look right away. And there's Willie just giving it the final polish while I play around with the camera and he's uh, giving it the old shoe shine polish. I was very happy with the end results. Just showing off some of the details. Like I said, I haven't done dovetails in a really long time and I never really practiced it to begin with so I went into this a little nervous. And uh, there you see that beautiful texture of the saw mark. And then this is just some late night photography. And there it is, pitch black pitch black oak and I'm just giving it a few last rubs and then uh, I just jump in there just to give it some scale too. It weighs about about 150 pounds with the steel and everything else so thank you very much.